Your inconsistency is killing your progress and stopping you from achieving your goals. Whether that's fitness, work, meditation, music, you name it. Not turning up regularly is holding you back. In this video, I'm gonna discuss two things which are gonna supercharge your ability to show up and get what you need to done. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm no David Goggins, and especially now, the current lifestyle that I'm living, I'm in the Philippines volunteering as a doctor, which is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but it has meant that a lot of things that are important to me are falling by the wayside. And that's why I'm making this video, because I have had periods of consistency in the past, and I found ways to be consistent to help myself achieve things that I wanna get done. This video is for you, but in some ways it's also for me to remind myself what I need to do to get back into my consistent routine. Now there's a couple of things that have been dropping off that are important to me. One of those is the gym and the, another one is meditating. I'm usually pretty consistent with the gym. I'm very consistent with meditating, usually meditating every day for at least 30 minutes. But as I'm out here currently working my butt off, trying to not think about myself so much and, and think more about the people out here, it means I've neglected those things which are important to me. And to be honest, yes, this week has been particularly stressful. There's just been a very high volume of patients. The nurse I'm working with has changed. So I'm actually working with uh, a midwife instead. She's less hands-on than the nurse. She's translating a little bit less, uh, which has just made the consultation process a little bit more difficult. Don't get me wrong, I still, I'm still loving the experience, but it is taking its toll on my stress levels. And they've definitely gone up a little bit this week. So yeah, I'm not gymming as much. I'm not meditating as much and that's fine for this season. But there are a few things that I want to do to improve my consistency again. And I'm going to tell you what they are. I need to bring you back to a time in my life where I started being consistent with something and started to see results. Now, as some of you may know, this started as a calisthenics channel and I would make calisthenics tutorials in an attempt to help people learn calisthenics as well. But there was a very long period of my life where I was terrible at calisthenics. I want to say it took me about four years to learn a handstand, which is actually a very long time. And in fact, it's kind of embarrassing to say. And I can pretty much put down why it took me so long to me being really inconsistent with my training. So when I graduated from university, I started working full-time as a doctor. I basically just felt really sick of being average at calisthenics. So I made a commitment to myself to train a minimum of three times per week. And this is the first time I ever got consistent with calisthenics. And the funny thing is, in two months of doing a consistent routine of training three times per week, I achieved a lifelong goal, and that was achieving the one-arm chin-up. And to this day, it's still one of my proudest achievements. But the only reason it happened is because I was able to be consistent for a number of weeks. This consistency at that time kind of stemmed from me just brute forcing it. It was just sheer willpower, just me not letting myself ever skip a workout. Looking back now, there's some things that I could have done that I could have implemented to make that process a little bit easier. Because willpower is a finite resource. You only have so much willpower before your emotions kick in and you just, you either lose interest or you lose motivation. But there are, are little hacks to get around this. And there is a hack that I started using for something else, which I wish I used for calisthenics as well. Now, fast forward roughly two years, I was having a terrible time at work. I was suffering with extreme anxiety and I was just dreading going to work every single day. And I knew I needed to do something to, to deal with my anxiety. Retrospectively, I probably should have spoken to someone but I turned to meditation. Thankfully at the time I discovered an app called Headspace and I found I was able to get myself into a pretty good routine with it, doing roughly about 10 minutes per day. And actually part of the reason for this was something that was inbuilt into the app and that was something called streaking. And no, I'm not talking about getting naked and running across a football pitch. I'm talking about having a streak that you don't wanna break. Inbuilt into the app is a streak system. You try and meditate every day and if you miss a day, you break the streak. Now there's something that plays in the human psychology. You'll find a lot of apps do this, for example, my missus, she's trying to learn Spanish at the moment via Geolingo, and they've got a similar streak system. And it's actually a really good way to keep yourself motivated, to keep showing up. Now I stopped doing guided meditation, I started just doing freestyle, and I realized I didn't need the app. I could create my own streak method just using the notes app on my phone. I'll show you what it looks like. I had just have a long note on my phone, which is called Meditation Tracker. And this isn't coming out super great on the screen, so maybe I'll just do a screen recording and show you. But, as you can see, I've just got loads of numbers on the screen. It doesn't really mean much, but basically all it is, is each week, each day, I record the number of minutes I've meditated. And at the end of the week, I have a total number. And I usually have a target of trying to hit a certain number of minutes per week. And this is actually a method called habit tracking, which if you haven't heard of Atomic Habits by James Clear, one of the best books I've ever read, 
you should definitely read it. It's another way to keep you motivated and actually even get a little dopamine every time you record a new figure or, or tick off a box. Another way of doing this, for example, is just buying a physical calendar. If you've done the tasks that you wanna get done that day, for example, meditating, playing piano for 10 minutes, then you just give a little tick. And on that calendar, ideally you wanna see every single day is ticked. It just works on your own psychology in a way that you don't wanna miss a day. And yeah, I've actually used this for other things as well. For example, tracking diet, using something called MyFitnessPal, and tracking workouts as well. Super effective. Habit tracking, give it a go. However, I found something even more effective that I wish I knew sooner, and I'm gonna tell you what that is now. So fast forward five years to today, there's something else that I'm trying to get consistent with. And that's something that you're watching right now on your computer, phone, or tablet. And that's content creation. But I've stacked in another hack, which is forcing me to be consistent. I don't know if you've been watching this series for a while, or if this is your first time here, but you may have noticed after every episode, I write out of 50. Now that's not just for some random reason. That 50 is the number of episodes I'm gonna produce in this series. And because I'm making one video a week, I'm basically gonna to have to make one of these videos every week for a whole year. And because I've announced it to the world, apparently it's gonna make me more likely to stick to it. And I can tell you now it's working already. And that's because of something called accountability. You've probably noticed, but it's much easier to let yourself down than it is to let down others. So if you've told someone you're gonna do something, you kind of have to do it. Because I've told you and all my other subscribers that I'm gonna do one video a week for a whole year, if I don't do it, I'm gonna feel like I've let you down. And there's even people in my real life who are counting on me to make these videos. I know one of my best mates from home, he's watching this right now, sitting on his sofa, relaxing on a Sunday. Just the fact of me knowing that he's expecting a video every Sunday for him to just chill and watch is another accountability factor. I really don't wanna let him down. I really don't wanna let you down, mate. And there's an interesting concept called self-binding, which I talked about in this addiction video just here. And self-binding is essentially making a decision today which will prevent you from doing something in the future. Now, it's usually applied to something harmful to you. So for example, my self-binding approach was with social media, and I basically had an app which locked me out for certain hours of the day. A decision today, which would affect my behavior tomorrow. But the accountability method is almost like the opposite of that. I've made a decision today, or a claim, that I'm going to do something that will affect how I behave tomorrow. And it doesn't just have to be announcing it on the internet. There's so many ways you can find an accountability partner. You can join groups, you can tell best friends or family members, or you can get a mentor or a coach. Basically just find someone you don't want to let down. And if you wanna make it even more interesting, you can bring money into the equation. So for example, you can say, I'm gonna start running every Sunday. And tell your wife, if you skip a run, you're gonna pay her $20. It's basically like having an accountability partner but on steroids. So yeah, I'm gonna start taking some of my own advice drinking my own medicine, as you might say. So streaks and tracking, and of course, accountability. If you found any useful techniques to help you stay consistent, please let me know in the comments below. I have to get back and go help some sick kids. So I'll see you next week. Keep training, keep living, peace.